Hello guys. You know, um, we are going to shut off my WhatsApp. Um, yeah, so I grew up in the countryside, which is actually a very, very, very beneficial fact in my political maturing package. We are going to add some time in US country as well for my political maturing um, package. And which other country are we going to use here? I don't know. We'll figure that out. But next year, I'm going to be spending some time in in US. That's for sure. I've now decided. And I am going to go for my uni entrance examination next Monday. They should, you know, you ought to. If, if you know what's good for you, if this country, if this universe knows what it's good for, 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 good for it. I was actually just thinking, am I one in, it's very, very millennial of me thinking how special I am. I know, I know, I know. But my social analysis, they just keep going, right, so what does it make? Is it one in 100,000? Is one in, uh, uh, yeah, we, we don't go there. You, you can You can guess, guess in the comments. What what is um because I'm having a sort of po political influence, sort of intuitive political influence, whatever that means, you know. Anyway, so uh, I grew up in the country, and um, EU was introduced, and all of its bureaucracy was introduced at the same time. The computers were introduced and the internet was introduced. It all came simultaneously and our neighbor had all the software needed. So he was kind of like the geeky of the village, geek of the village. And I always just bureaucratic and softwares, bureaucratic, you know, this mushy bureaucracy has always been a little bit like alien to me. But um, anyhow, uh, my dad, as it happens, always refused to receive EU benefits. Of course, you know, it runs in the family. Why am I like this? It runs in the family. Hello. So, but it also was, you know, he started, as I've said a million times now, he started. It's not the first one. It's the first one that was privately funded by the villagers, so very communal. Privately funded and backed, uh, the loans were backed by private people, which was kind of like, it, it was because the government was saying, we are not going to participate in this. And he had the foresight of pushing it through anyway. So we absolutely, absolutely need these kind of forces in the society because most of the people I remember from my childhood, there was a lot of barking going on, you know, because it's easier to bark when someone else is, is pushing it, going forward, despite the barking, you know. So you have to be a very, very particular person um, to have this kind of... We had a cartoonist in this country that my father adored, and probably because... I watched a documentary about him yesterday and he was he was uh, not an easy person at all. And I was just watching that and I was trying to MDBI him. I was like, that's a clear ENTP. Is, is he not? And then I'm like, mm, but he needed structure. But him needing a structure might have easily been um, anxiety behavior. He had clear, clear suppressed anxiety which came then in a form of rage, you know, as it happens, and um, generational trauma from the war. And he was self-medicating with alcohol. So having a strict routine is not ENCP at all, but uh, having a substitute behavior, running away from your uh, anxiety in the form of clear structures, because then you can go drinking after you've done your work. And his daughter said something, which is which sounds sad, that he always took care of business. I think taking care of business is attending to your family. That's business. So, hmm. anyway, yeah. But um, it's the cost of being a, being a somewhat a genius. It's the cost of 
being hyper intelligent is a cost of doing all this is that you are ha you are less present to your who are the ones that actually matter you are actually less present that's the parad paradox paradox of being hyper intelligent and hyper smart and good for the society but not maybe good for your you know not maybe good for yourself and that's why my motto is at the moment always choose yourself first because people like me we oftentimes choose everything else first because it's easier because you have your brain to run away from so it's easier meeting your uh lurky you know behind the closet or inside the closet those things is actually very difficult and i have great admiration to people who have done it who have taken the time i've done it because choosing always the easy option or substitute behavior i'm not saying it's um oftentimes it's subconscious so you don't understand that you are doing it so it takes um courage and it takes cognition to see it and then act accordingly anyway yeah so uh my political package what does it entail um i find it very interesting i find it very intriguing to um try to figure out the despot behavior because why Finns and why turkey is going to back down now with finland is because we have we are already kind of tired with one despot so we don't need another one you know and why a uh, turkish despot is going to really look like uh, putin's puppy puppet is because he is going to cause friction in northern europe in northern european land structure and because putin sees this an opportunity to cause friction between finland and sweden because Finns are slavic and swedes are not <laughs> so but i think what finland really needs to remember now that we are not packing down for either one of us. But the uh, political pressure from Finland is going to get bigger of us separating from Sweden. That's going to happen. So it's up to our government again to clearly express that that's not going to happen. But this is a, this is just, just a sign of how big thing this is to U.S., They've been waiting for good three generations for Finland to come out of why we are why we are not looking at Adam with great enthusiasm at the moment is because we just grew out of those pants. You know, we are now big boys and girls. We have European pants, and Adam looks too much like Putin. Just another despot who's trying to tell us what to do. Go away. So, um, and Swedish are famous for discutering. They are very good at let's have a fika and discutera or you know, to the end of earth. And we are having times of war where less talk is always better. And, uh, <sighs> You know that YouTube always says that I have to approve. I have to approve your comments. So now I'm like, should, we, should I approve? Um, yeah, so... Um, there's simultaneously so much going on that um, it's a good idea for everyone to take a breather from social media, take a breather from... I just deleted my dating app yesterday you know my friend told me that i sound like I, I, i'm spending too much time on social media so i was like fine let's do that and um yalla much love and have a great weekend yeah, I can't go out this weekend. Or should I go out this weekend? I don't know. You know, being old and everything, uh, I can't handle the hangover. 
but yeah Monday I'm going to drive I haven't been anywhere so it's a good opportunity for me to you know have a road trip and everything um yeah so it's it's interesting to see there will be however a political pressure uh, internal political pressure mind you Adan is a despot but however he can't resist uh political pressure coming from his people either uh much like the Finnish government couldn't resist their people's voice um but it is interesting to see what happens because this uh NATO rhetoric that um it's agonizing to listen to the Turkish voice matters Turkish voice actually doesn't matter at all sorry that's the truth it doesn't it doesn't matter in the end of the day it doesn't matter but Turkish I don't know why people don't see that they have the same method as the Russians as any despot you claim something outrageous and by the way uh, Trump as well you say something outrageous and then you can accept 20% of that, and you have still achieved something. We are honest and we have too much integrity here, so we are just saying as it is, actually no, you have to start doing the same, like say something completely outrageous. But, yeah, there's law and there's decency and, yeah. Mm. But um, it's just the paradox of Adam saying something crazy and then the West going like, oh, but we have to take this concern seriously. We actually don't have to hear, hear like, we just, just, yeah. And I'm not alone. This is a very common mentality and um, sentiment uh, that why are we listening to that guy in the first place? Like, And why on earth is there some bunch of, bureaucratic uh you know it's just it's a show but we are quite not ready for this kind of show right now because we are we are really doing our separation from soviet union at the moment it, it, it's it's a big shift and now you are expecting us to hear mr adam out mm, too much too soon Maybe in five years' time we are ready for that, but not, not at the moment. Whereas in Sweden, it's like it's a lot slower and it's a lot tamer. They don't. I don't think they have this, 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 this. They don't. There's two hundred years from their last war, you know. So they don't have this war in their genes, and they don't have this pride. Things are so, and I, I want to hug every Finn now because we have found our inner pride and that's the best thing. I have really started to dig my home country because we have found the same kind of healthy nationalism, nationalism, I repeat, healthy nationalism, not angry, not angry, healthy European nationalism, a being happy for your country, I'm promoting your country in a healthy, but, you know, you have a healthy self-confidence. That's what I love at the moment. Yeah. Okie dokie. I'm going back, developing my political package, my political maturity package. And um, what, what, what color is the ribbon of that box? Hmm? Yeah, but uh, true conversation, so, yeah, the week, the work keeps going, <laughs> the work keeps going. Okie dokie, have a good one, bye.